Hi everyone, my name is Atemba and welcome back to my channel. So my past few videos have been telling you how to get a job in Korea as a teacher, from the visa process to the different types of schools, and now this video is the golden ticket. I'm going to show you how to find the best job for you in South Korea, from the best websites to use and how to utilize them, how to use Facebook to find jobs, how to use Craigslist, all the different resources out there, and even things like what to put on your resume and how to deal with recruiters. All of that good stuff is in this video right here. So I know it's a little bit long and I'm really sorry about that, but I promise if you stick through it, you are going to get so many helpful tips about how to come teach in Korea. So please watch the video, take some notes now, get out your notepad, and I really hope that it helps so you. let's get started. The first site I want to show you is called eslcafe.com. This website is really good for finding multiple teaching jobs in multiple countries, but we are just concerned with Korean jobs. So if you look on the left in this purple sidebar, you can see it says Korean job board. So let's click that. And here's a Korean job board. So if you scroll down, all of these are the listed positions. This site has really, really good teaching jobs. I found most of my jobs through here and gotten a lot of interviews through here. When you scroll down, in the blue, this is the job title. And in the black, that is the person or the job, the employer who is posting it. Or it could be a recruiter posting it. Let us click on this one, Foreigner Faculty Positions in Busan, posted by Yongsan University. And you'll see here that you'll see the job title, you'll see who it's posted by, this is a university job, there's their email, which is good for contact and emailing your cover letter resume. You'll see the date is listed and that's a good thing because the sooner you respond, as soon as they post, the better chance you have for being contacted. When you scroll down the job listing, there should be a description of the position and hopefully also of the school or the place that's trying to hire you. So it has the position title, the location, which is in Busan, how many positions, what are the requirements, uh, where you should send your application, more qualifications, desired skills, benefits, things like that. So this is a direct listing and direct listings are good because you cut out the middleman. So let's go back to the index. And just so you know, if you want to easily identify a direct hire from a recruiter, just look at the job title. For example, you see all these little funky symbols, these diamonds, these stars, um, exclamation points and whatever this is, all of this nonsense. That is how the recruiter is trying to get your attention because they want to get as many people as they can to click and get hired. They're trying to gas you up about coming to Korea because the more applicants they have, the bigger the applicant pool, then the better they can serve their real clients, which are their schools. You are not a recruiter's client. Don't get it twisted. They are working for the schools. They're not working for you. So, for example, this first one is definitely posted by a recruiter. Another clue, it says various positions. When it has all these types of schools listed or it has all these locations listed, then it is almost certainly posted by a recruiter. So actually, let's click on this one and you'll see it has so many things listed here. Oh, email protected. Okay, that's some new kind of tea. Okay, there it goes. So it has the um, email. This is the recruiter's email. So this is where you send your info to the recruiter and they basically decide if you're a um, hireable candidate, if you're a desirable candidate or not. And if you scroll down, they have information about their company trying to convince you why they're the best recruiting agency to work with. And then they have all their positions listed. So I'm saying all this, I'm not trying to trash recruiters because there are some good ones, there are some helpful ones, but overall, just the fact that they're not really working for you, they're trying to fill their own quota, they're trying to help the schools they have. I don't mess with recruiters because they get to decide if they even want to show your application to the schools or not. A lot of jobs in Korea, a lot of employers, they like hiring white teachers over any kind of teacher of color. That's just the truth. Don't fight me on it. Don't debate me. So when they get, when recruiters get applicants that are black or just not white, then the recruiter might not feel like they can market you to a school. If they can't market you to a school, if they're not convinced a school would hire you, then they don't get their percentage of that hire. So a lot of times 
when I'm applying for jobs and I'm using recruiters, I know exactly what I want, what city, what location, what age group. And a lot of times I'm flexible. I, I'll, I'll, I'm open to many jobs, but I might not be open to many locations. For example, I really wanted to be in Seoul, but a lot of recruiters kept trying to tell me there are no jobs in Seoul. You better look in Gyeonggi-do, the area outside of Seoul, or the only jobs in Seoul are kindergarten. You're going to have to teach kindergarten. You're going to have to teach these whack hours. You're going to have to take this whack pay. And it's not true because I am teaching university freshmen in Seoul with a good behind paycheck with housing and all this other good stuff. So anyway, I found my job with threat listings. This is why I don't really mess with recruiters. But looking at this now, seeing couple positions, recruiters are good for couple positions. They're good if you just don't want to do a lot of work and sometimes they do vouch for you. So anyway, this is what a recruiter listing looks like. There are so many jobs to choose from. Um, again, in my opinion, they're just trying to attract you into working with them because they might not even have some of these positions available anymore. It might just be to get your attention or to show these are examples of jobs we've had. I, I've just seen everything with recruiters, but I'm just gonna show y'all like, there is a huge variety for the bigger agencies. Like this scroll is unreal. There's so many jobs here. And they can be helpful definitely for at least getting started. It does feel good when you're getting a couple of emails and phone calls because some schools are interested even if it's not what you really want. Anyway, this is what a recruiting job post looks like. And just one more thing. I just wanted to show how recruiting jobs don't have exact specifications about the schools they list. It's pretty vague. So let me find another one. Let's go to Star Teachers. They'll just say, this is the school and this is the location. This is when you start. This is the age group. These are the hours. Yeah, so you don't get exactly how many students. You don't get a lot of specific information. Let's go back to the index and find some direct hires. Okay, British Council Korea. This is a direct hire. You can see the job posts, it's just straight to the point. Let's see another one. Okay, here, CL Education Center. Okay, let's look at a direct listing. So here they give you the exact location, tell you everything about the school. So this is what a direct listing looks like. Anyway, let's go back. There's one more thing I want to show you about this site, which is how to search. So here is the search button. You can search, so here's some things I've searched before. Editor, you can search non-teaching jobs on here. They do post them on here. Um, you can search for cities. You can search for school types. And you'll definitely have to dig, but it's just a really good place to start. It's a good, trustworthy website. And something else you can do is you can post your resume. So if you look here at the top on the left in this green box, you'll see post your resume. So let's click that and when you post your resume so here are all the other resumes that have been posted by people now you can't click and look at anyone's unless you yourself have registered as a recruiter and they you have to pay this is why this website is pretty trustworthy so my suggestion is when you're posting your resume post your name post your email before the subject don't just put what subject you want to teach like here you, you want to be specific. You want to work in Seoul, you have this visa, you have experience where, when you can start, what kind, uh, what age group you're interested in. And then for your resume, you're gonna need to make a non-graphic, non-HTML version of your resume, something that is just pretty cut and dry. For example, like this. Start with a really, really brief self-introduction and have your name, contact information, you can even have your Kakao ID, your basic information, education, work history, experience. So I have an asterisk beside these things because in Korea they want a lot more information than we're used to giving in the USA, such as your age, your marital status, your photo, things like that. And you can include it, but to me, it, it's just another way for them to discriminate. Unless you're looking for a couple job, I wouldn't put anything about my marital status because I feel like for women especially, they'll start looking at you funny, like, are you going to have a baby anytime soon? Are you going to take maternity leave as soon as we hire you? Things like that. And then for age, um, same thing, like sometimes they 
don't want teachers that seem too seasoned because they won't be able to boss them around or they don't want teachers that are too young because if you're teaching older students then you know they don't think students will respect you or the age gap is too close and for languages spoken this is mainly for people of Korean ethnicity really any Asian ethnicity if you look like you're Korean a lot of times schools don't think you can speak English well even if you've never lived in Korea even if all you've known your whole life is English and especially for um, people who are ethnically Korean which Koreans call Kyopos if you know Korean I wouldn't put it on my resume unless the job is specifically asking for bilingual people of Korean ethnicity or just bilingual people in Korean and English because it's just another way for them to discriminate. So I wouldn't give them more than they ask for. I wouldn't give them anything that's just going to possibly eliminate me. I would just stick to the teaching facts. And if they ask in the interview, then you can give that information. Okay, so that's Dave's ESL. The second site I want to show you is called ESLROK.com. This website is a bit more colorful. This is what it looks like. And the thing I like most about this website is that you can choose to search within certain parameters. So these are the teaching jobs listed here. And if you notice in the corner, they have little tabs telling you this is a direct hire. This is a direct hire. And this is a recruiter, direct hire. This is an online teaching position. So that's the main thing that I like about this website. And even if you scroll, up a little more you can see you can filter the jobs by the student age by the location you've got other major cities in Korea here is the search bar you know what let's just look at the direct hire jobs so if we just go to the top here where it says jobs we can decide if we want to look at their direct hire jobs or their recruiter jobs or online university all that good stuff so let's look at the direct hire jobs. Okay, here are the direct hire jobs. So here is the job title, here is the date posted. Here are some quick tidbits about the school, location, things like that. Here's a non-teaching job, English administrative assistant. And see, here's someone, they would want someone who can speak Korean, so I would put that on my resume if I knew Korean. Let's look at a job listing. Okay, so this is a public school listing, it looks like. So this is the name of an actual governmental office of education. So it's probably a public school job. So let's click it and check it out. And here is what an actual job listing looks like. There's a title at the top. And if you sign up, you can save these jobs so they're easier to keep track of. Here is the school information, the same quick bits of information that were on the front page. Here's content details, the date added, details about the job, and they even have their website. So this is a pretty good job listing. They're pretty detailed and to the point. So this is what a job posting looks like on ESL or OK. And recruiter job listings, they would look the same as on Dave's ESL where they list a bunch of different jobs, different positions. And another thing about this website, the final thing is you can add your resume to this website too. The last website I want to show you is Craigslist. <laughs> yes, Craigslist. So Craigslist is something you definitely need to use at your own risk. 99% of the jobs on here are teaching jobs and 99% of those jobs are posted by recruiters. But sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find some kind of job lead on here that might not be on the other websites you can also post your resume but I would post I wouldn't post my full resume I would just post some real quick bits of information about myself such as my I wouldn't even say my name I would just say I'm an English teacher with this many years of experience I'm from this country I would like to teach these students my skills are and I would not, I would use the Craigslist email. I wouldn't put my phone number. I wouldn't put my real email. I wouldn't put any real contact information. But sometimes people do reach out to you on there. Um, I've had random recruiters reach out to me from Craigslist, but 
again craigslist you're mostly gonna just get recruiters but anyway on this right side you've got jobs and actually most of the jobs are education jobs i'll just click to show you so here are all the jobs and you can see <laughs> most of these are teaching jobs so they'll usually have the city what they're looking for the region it's in you might have a real specific region like the station name and everything these are mostly recruiters and um, sometimes it'll be a recruiter listing many jobs in one post but usually on craigslist recruiters will post one of their available jobs at a time so this is what a job posting looks like on craigslist let's go back let's try and search something specific let's search direct listing oh here's one there's a there's a lot of them okay let's look at this new school direct hire so i guess this is the name of the school salts students around loving teachers and there are positions available and okay in my previous video i talked about getting your documents together getting your documents ready a lot of times in the job listing they want to see do you have these things ready so that we can hire you as quickly as possible and if you want to respond you would just click here and it will have all their information listed on here so that's how you use craigslist as for recruiter websites they're all more or less the same but i'll show you an example of one corvia.com here's corvia's website like i've said before i've worked with corvia in the past they've placed me before the recruiters are really good for a couple positions but even besides that i like working with them because they actually sat and talked to me about my desires what i want from a workplace from a job even like things like fulfillment in my job and things like that so i feel like they're pretty trustworthy and they work with you as best as they can and if you want to give them your resume to be considered and to work with them you would click on apply and they got a little checklist and here's an application form most recruiting websites they have a form that looks just like this you have to input all your information and eventually you will have to upload your resume your photos cover letter but this is how most recruiting websites look like. I just thought of another great resource to use. Facebook. Join Facebook groups that are related to Korea, teaching in Korea, living in Korea, because people are posting their jobs, they are posting their own positions, and that makes it even more trustworthy. You can get even more details about the job by asking the specific posters and teachers who currently or previously work there. So for example, there's a group called Every Expat in Korea. It's a public Facebook group for expats in Korea. So if you are in that group, you would just simply search in this keyword, hiring. You can do this in any group that you join to see who is posting positions, whose schools are hiring, who's looking for teachers. So if you post, if you search for hiring, you'll get results that look something like this. And there are also Facebook groups that are dedicated solely to posting jobs in Korea. If you go to Facebook in the search bar and simply type in jobs in Korea, then you'll find a listing such as this one. I'm part of this first group, but there are just a plethora of other groups you can choose from. And if you're looking for a job in a specific city, then that's something else you can search for on Facebook to find groups or pages related to that. For example, if you type in jobs in Daegu, this is a list of all the Facebook groups that come up. And this is a very good way to find jobs for a specific city. Finally, I just encourage you to join all the Facebook groups you can for specific locations. For example, if you're going to move to Daegu or you want to live there, just find groups related to Daegu. Even if it doesn't specifically say jobs in Daegu or teaching in Daegu. If you join these groups and learn more about life there and meet the people who live there in these groups, I guarantee that there are people in these groups who will post, hey, I'm leaving my job in one month and this is what my job needs in a teacher. Does, any, is anyone interested? And that is another great way to find jobs in Korea. All right, guys, I told you it was a little long, but wasn't it worth it? So I really hope it was helpful. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You can contact me in the comments or on my social media pages or through my blog. And if you go to my blog, you will see a huge list of even more websites you can use that will help you find teaching jobs in Korea. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys again next time. Bye!